Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. We've got a second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. You guys can head there, check it out. Uh, for the rest of the things that you do, you can go to the description box and you'll find it like our podcast and our Patreon. I have a blog, Morning Coffee with Funny. Please check it out. I'll be very, very appreciative. If you love short stories, you can follow me on Instagram, Safani so L. And I'd just like you to read my stuff. Uh, a big shout out to the person that suggested this. A big shout out to everyone that subscribed so fast to subscribing, liking, sharing, giving us things to do. Thank you very much. And um, today, as you can tell from the title, we'll be reacting to will be reacting to top 15 mistakes in locked up in Malaysia's lockdown video by Al Jazeera. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. This is a recent video that was published and unfortunately it has so many mistakes and so we're gonna pick the top 15 to cover today. Number 15, taking videos and footages of police and military. I, I've got my ID. Look, this is my ID, I'm from the press. Again. This is lockdown area. No cameras, please. But, but we're within our rights to report from here. Oh, yeah. But this lockdown is red. Throughout the entire world, you really can't be taking footage of police and military. So many countries, that's illegal. Even in the United States, if you took video footage of the security around the White House, that could get you thrown in jail. Well, Al Kazeera thinks that because they're reporters, they're above everybody else. Number 14, complaining that they weren't allowed into high-risk areas of COVID-19. We're not allowed inside these fenced off areas. Now, I don't know if they don't realize how COVID-19 works. It spreads pretty easily. And so if they were able to go into an area that was high risk, they could easily pick up COVID-19, especially when you look at the video footage and realize that lots of times they weren't wearing a mask or they only were wearing a mask. I mean, look at how many doctors who were completely prepared, had tons of protection, picked up COVID-19. Number 13, blocking comments. You need to always allow comments, but in this video, they have blocked all comments on YouTube. You need to allow people to be able to point out when you don't do things that are accurate or when you do things really biased. But if you don't allow comments, people can't point those out. And I just think as a reporter, it's so unprofessional to block comments. I really don't think YouTube should allow that. Number 12, complaining that the government never responded. Several requests to interview the senior minister, home minister, and his deputies were declined. All right, Mr. True Ambrose. Well, the government's a little bit busy. They're fighting this thing called COVID-19, which is extremely deadly and spreads super easy. And sorry, they probably didn't have time to answer every single question you had because they're busy fighting the disease. So please, man, get off your high horse. Not everybody can take time out of their life to serve you, right, dude? Like, have a reality check. Number 11, for game how racism works. Is this the practical reality of dealing with a pandemic? Or is it racism? Okay, if you're not aware, racism was mentioned multiple times in the video. How racism works is where you judge a group of people based on their skin color. And in this instance, it would be people of Indian descent or people that look Indian. And if you're not aware, there are multiple Malaysians, actually over 7% of Malaysians are of Indian descent. They look exactly like migrant workers that are both legal and illegal. So if the Malaysian government was racist, they would be targeting anybody that looked Indian, Bangladeshi, or Pakistani. But the Malaysian government specifically was doing things for illegal immigrants. And anyone that was of Indian descent that was Malaysian, they were fine, they had no complaints. So this is clearly not a racism issue, this is an illegal immigration issue. And those are different things. To call it racism is just completely wrong and out of place. Number 10, ignoring countries that are extremely racist towards their migrant workers. I've traveled all around the world and I have several friends that are migrant workers and there are several places where I discovered that people were very racist towards migrant workers. And actually in Malaysia, migrant workers are treated better than almost anywhere else in the world. Here, locals of a different country call legal migrant workers lazy, messy, unhygienic. Number nine, treating illegal migrant workers like they're all victims. Illegal migrant workers have specifically not obeyed the law 
and are working illegally. Even in your own video, you have a human rights lawyer, somebody that really supports undocumented and illegal migrant workers. And she points out that this illegal migrant worker didn't do anything and that she can't really support him because he put in no effort to try to be legal. Okay, did he attempt to go to the labor department to file a case against his employer? And throughout this video, you often show that they are victims when they could have just put in some effort to make sure that they obeyed the law and got a working visa. Number eight, saying the jobs that migrant workers are working, Malaysians don't want to work. And it's probably true, there are several jobs that Malaysians would prefer that migrant workers did. But in the video, you show how there were used to be 60 jobs at the market that migrant workers worked. And when they set out applications, they had over 500 Malaysians apply for that job. So clearly, in this job, Malaysians wanted to work it, but their jobs were taken by migrant workers. Muhammad ran a recruitment drive to replace the foreign workers with locals. 500 Malaysians applied for just 60 positions. Number seven, never acknowledging that illegal migrant workers put the entire country at huge risk for COVID-19. See, illegal migrant workers are working illegally. It's in the name. And because they're working illegally, they're not registered. The government doesn't even know if they're probably in the country or where they live or who they work for, and there's no way to track them. And so with COVID, it's so important to track and trace everybody that gets COVID. For example, look at what China did and what Taiwan did and what South Korea did and Japan. All these countries that were extremely good at fighting COVID-19 were able to track everybody in their country and who had it and who didn't. But when you have 4 million illegal immigrants and there's no way to trace them, you're putting your entire country at huge risk. And putting this in the video is so important because then people can kind of understand why the Malaysian government might be trying to figure out who's illegal in Malaysia because it affects the safety of all Malaysians. Number six, acting like sitting in the sun and getting questioned about if you're legally working in Malaysia is like the worst thing in the world. He says his whole family, including his son and daughter, were handcuffed and chained together with other children and the elderly under the hot sun. They were only released hours later after authorities verified their documents. All right, right now COVID-19 is happening. There are so many children around the world that are losing parents to COVID-19 and are gonna be raised without their father or mother. And you are upset that a daughter had to sit out in the sun? I mean, if this is the worst thing that happens in your COVID-19 experience, you are very blessed because so many people around the world would give anything to be able to sit out in the sun a few hours and know that their country is safe. Number five, forgetting that everybody is going through a really hard time right now. It's not just the illegal migrant workers or the migrant workers, Malaysians as well are going through a hard time. So many Malaysians have lost their job. So many Malaysians are struggling right now. And to focus that the only people struggling are illegal migrant workers and migrant workers is unfair. Everybody is going through a hard time. Number four, being very misleading and not always honest. For example, handcuffing children. I really don't think this happened. Do you have any footage? Do you have any proof? Do you have anything more than one or two people saying it happened? And regardless, if children are handcuffed, I mean, it's not the end of the day. It doesn't hurt them. Oh, big deal. I mean, come on, I'm a dentist. I have to treat kids' teeth all the time. That's way worse and way more painful than getting handcuffed. But I do it because it's for the good of the kid overall. So just because something's inconvenient or unpleasant, you can't, not everybody lives in a fairy tale land, but regardless, I think that was pretty inaccurate. You also use multiple selective examples. You purposely pick stories and try to show things that made Malaysia look bad. I mean, you look at the end of the video, you purposely pick a mother with a child. Come on, that was set up. You didn't pick a 50 year old man, you picked a mother with a child. Many Malaysians, especially doctors and nurses, have risked their lives treating COVID-19 positive patients that were illegal immigrants. These illegal immigrants got free care, free food, free clothing, free toiletries, and everything was provided to them. And this makes you wonder how many other things were inaccurate in this video. Number three, mixing up legal and illegal migrant workers. Hey, listen to this. And anti-immigration Facebook groups have been telling illegal migrants to go home. Did you catch it? One word changes the entire structure of the sentence, and that's how media can be very misleading. He says, 
anti-immigration Facebook group. But the page he's showing is an anti-illegal immigration Facebook group. And there's a big difference between anti-immigration and anti-illegal immigration. 101 East investigates why so many foreigners are being locked up in Malaysia's lockdown. Even in the intro summary, you got it wrong. You're not investigating foreigners, all foreigners. No, you're investigating illegal foreigners. You need to say the word illegal. Number two, completely not understanding how you fight COVID-19. Authorities have been carrying out military-style operations across the capital, Kuala Lumpur. COVID-19 is a time where you need to be strict. You can't allow people moving all around. You need to be very, very strict because if one person with COVID-19 moves and goes about, they can easily spread it to so many more people. And so COVID-19 is a time that you need to have a military style lockdown because that's the only thing that works. It worked in Taiwan, it worked in Hong Kong, it worked in China, it worked in South Korea, and it also worked in Malaysia. And in this video, you make it sound like a military style lockdown is a bad thing. No, that is an amazingly good thing. And the USA and many other countries in the Americas have not done that and look at the results. Wouldn't you rather have a little bit of a military style lockdown and save thousands of lives? I think most people would be in favor of that. Number one, never saying the good things about Malaysia. Malaysia is an incredible success story. I would recommend you check out this video or this video. Trust me, they're well done and the person that made them is pretty cool. Anyway, regardless, Malaysia did such an amazing job. I mean, it was amazing to see how people from all different backgrounds, famous and average citizens, all came together for the good of Malaysia. And I think that's really important to talk about in this video when you're gonna be talking about COVID-19. And that was completely ignored and completely wrong to ignore that in making this video. So those were my top 15 things that were mistakes in Malaysia's locked up in Malaysia's lockdown video. Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments and don't worry, I will keep comments on. And on a personal note, I'm just really, I guess, disappointed that a major media source would basically make things that were very biased, very inaccurate, and not do the proper research and not even really understand how COVID-19 works because many of the things that actually help prevent COVID-19, they said were wrong. And if you look at the data and results, obviously it's working in Malaysia and it's working in other Asian countries. And so at a time when people are really suffering and dying, you shouldn't be picking out because some people had to sit out in the sun or were uncomfortable. Let's look at the bigger results. Lives were saved. And if a few people had to be uncomfortable to save a few lives, I think it was definitely worth it. Very nice uh, video. Last time I reacted to this guy, he was showing how Malaysia managed to beat the pandemic or other coronavirus situation or how they um, set themselves up to protect people, help people, whatever the case is. Uh, am I surprised that Al Jazeera did this? No, I'm not. By now, um, we should know that bad news sells anything but anything negative is going to so anyone who's aware with uh, this media situation we know that if i'm going to write an article on something the most negative um headline will make people buy that paper or read my blog post or whatever the case is so that's what's happening here they'll say anything it's like it, it's more like people that give clickbait i'm just not sure so that's why we have people out there you as the person you've got a smartphone you can show us what's happening um it's up to us to defeat this thing that news outlets or media itself has to say something negative for us to pay attention which is why i say if you're going to pay attention to the media because they're saying oh maybe ten thousand people in zambia died because of coronavirus then you're going to be misled these media outlets are misleading very very misleading but that's that's news bad news sells otherwise a big shout out to this guy for bringing for calling these people a 
big shout out to this guy for saying uh, this is quite inaccurate. So yeah, let me know what you think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.